there's two, right? I'm sorry, is it? There's two community <laughs> service officers? Yeah. That, and that's not the community service officer you were talking about adding this year. Remember when you were that's saying community relations? Yes, thank you. So yeah, it's totally different. different. Okay, and then the, so they're both full time, but they're different times of the day, correct? So how, how much of their time is spent, would you say, and again, it's gonna be an estimate, but just say on a daily basis, checking for, for giving out parking fines? I mean, their primary duty is parking enforcement, um, but they also, if you remember, we used to have seven, uh, seven um, non-sworn personnel, mm -hmm. and we're down to two, I think we're down to three, so they also work at the front desk, so when Teresa, who is the public safety clerk, so when she's absent, one of the two CSOs will fill in for her position. In addition, so the day shift person will also do um, crossing guards, if the crossing guards mm -hmm. are not in, um, there, uh, which unfortunately happens um, as well. So she'll take that post until, or, or until they get someone there. Um, they also do like running of squats to, to DPW and those types of things. Mm -hmm. And then um, any other, you know, if we have to pay a car to general communications to get outfitted or whatever, they'll be the person that goes and does that. So they have just other duties as assigned. Um, but yes, their primary duty is. Would you say like on average <coughs> it's about how, you know, eight of the 10 hours or whatever it is for their position? Um, I would I don't know percentage wise, but I would say the majority of their time is spent doing parking enforcement. Correct. Can the executive secretary take over when the public safety clerk is out of out? Um, they could, and she has done that in the past at times. The only reason I asked too is I, I saw that that cross they fill in for crossing guards, and if we ever get to the point where we want to, you know, what what is the ramifications of using a community service officer? to do crossing guard in the morning or, you know, just less tickets that they write? Um, there's only two of them, I mean, there's, well, there's nine corners that we right. I mean, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, they could be used for that. So we don't have an allocation, they're not in that, they're not in Appendix C, right? That's correct. Their, their base wages are, are not allocated uh, because you, uh, um, we have this expenditure charge to others line item uh, at the bottom of the police department budget, and that's where we take um, wages uh, from the police department into parking utility. But their but their total wages are over a hundred thousand, so we're only billing fifty percent of them to the parking utility. Is that right? Well, we're I mean, billing 50%. Right. We're, well, we've got the metrics in the parking utility budget for what drives those charges, and I believe it's also in the details um, on page 57, um, bottom left corner. Is it part on street parking fines in parking utility or in the police? Parking fines are represented in the general fund. That's just an enforcement activity. So that yeah. so they are in the, yeah, the general on street the, parking um, enforcement. The cross charge is related to a certain amount of compliance need to make sure that people are permitted in the parking utility zones. Um, they also get out tickets for not permitting. I mean, they get out tickets for sitting in a handicap spot. Is that correct? That's correct. So when we get to parking, if, if the if there is revenue, if there is activity on on street parking, and then they're enforcing that activity, that permit, that should that's not cross charged into parking. Meaning you're not billing parking utilities. Well, I don't know that they're enforcing the permit as far as they are enforcing the general parking regulations of the village, which also includes the night parking, which requires permits. Like Again, we can get into maybe a little better discussion than in the parking are you, utility. Are you wondering if more can yeah. be charged? Yeah, yeah. Parking utility. yeah. I'm wondering, yeah, if yeah. we should look at that. The allocation for the parking utility, yeah. that that could increase. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, would that go yeah. on the list? Well, I'll, 
I'll just tell you if, if I'm happy to go down that route, even though I think it depends on the definition of the parking utility. But if you are charging enforcement, then the fine revenue has got to move to the parking utility as well. And you're going to you're going to create a, a, another significant issue. And it's again, it's a it's a it's a community enforcement. It's not directly related to the parking utility. The parking utility is selling permits. Well, I'm, yeah, I mean, and this is an issue you brought up with moving between the parking utility and the general mm -hmm. fund, and there's so many pieces to that. Yes. And I'm, and I, you know, it's very difficult to untangle. And I, that was my question. I'm not clear. Are is the parking utility helping us in terms of levy or or hurting us? I I still am not. It's very hard to tell. Well, let's have a good discussion on that when we get there. Okay. So the desire would be that it would. Help us. Yes. <laughs> so in our helpful, in our healthy discussion, let's focus on how it, the strategic, the strategy of the yeah, I mean, I guess the question is, you know, what if we dissolve the parking utility, and then we would have, uh, we would have, there's a, some money in there, sitting in there, um, but then we have, you know, then we'd have costs. And I don't know. I mean, I, I was trying. Or does to, that hurt our revenue? Or, or would that, that be, you know, would that be good or bad if we dissolve the parking utility? Well, let's see where. For that discussion leads, yeah. I mean, there's there is pros and cons in many different right. aspects of this, and and again, I think if the board can say, oh, I want the purpose of the parking utility is, if they feel that's still valid, and then uh, then everything else can kind of flow from that discussion. Just a quick question about, about uh, fuel cost. Uh, do we have some sort of contract in place to stabilize that at 275 a gallon, or is that an estimate and we'll kind of flow what the fuel prices actually are? Best guess. Best guess, not an average over three years? No, we can't. CPF. We cannot crystal ball fuel prices. I, I wish I could. So, CPF. best guess, you know, no hurricanes destroying oil fields in the Gulf this summer, so that's a good thing. And, Right, it's budgeting. We can do our best guess. That's well, yes. mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm guessing. <laughs> you too. I'll, You're like a married couple. Sometimes here. I'll say the opposite. So. I know. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I know. I'll tell Take you it what I'm guessing. Take it outside. Okay. Take Take it outside. okay. Uh, so for parking fines. Well, okay. No, sure. Um, so for parking fines, I just want to be clear. The only the forty thousand dollar increase is strictly not because we project we're going to be giving out more fines. It's more of because we'll be collecting the ones that are outstanding. That's correct. That's the metric that the budget based on. And what happens if we change the parking regulations? Now, well, that's an awesome question. And the reason I ask that is I just don't want there to be a big hole in this. Because that may that will be one of I think our considerations. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, but we might adopt. I'm, yeah. I don't know how you handle that. It's like a natural, you know, like we're saying. There's not a, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and for overtime, the projected is 120, and we're we're budgeting 100,000. I just wanted to know why there was a that it was a, just a fluke that there was a 20,000 dollar more overtime. Or is it? Chief Nimmer, do you have any indication on some of the changes in the overtime? For this year, particularly, I mean, I think the uh, goal is always to stay around that hundred thousand dollar mark. It all depends mm -hmm. on staff. Um, you know, if we have injuries, people leave um, FMLA, and then any type of caseload. It all is dependent on that. So it's a really difficult number to just give you, any, you know, a hard number on. Sure. So we do shoot. I do shoot for a hundred thousand. Um, and you'll see the one year we got close, um, and this year, you know, but I would say we're at 120 ish this year. But if you remember, we were down three officers, yeah, or the salaries and wages yeah. are down, so, so that's sense. usually um, indicative of that. So when that number's up, the salary line will be down typically, mm -hmm. um, just because of the staff and the department. And you, your factor of vacancy is one half of police officer increase, that is correct. Yeah, next year we may have a whole entire year. We have an officer that is um, an Army National Guard member, and he looks like he's going to be deployed to Afghanistan for 2019. Mm -hmm. So that um, just about assures that we'll at least have a half a year with, with uh, an FTE. Wow. wow. So just going on that for a second, because it's throughout the budget. I don't know where else to address it. I did mention to Rebecca, I don't know if you got the answer, if you didn't have data today, but um, 
the vacancy rate is budgeted at a certain amount, but I really want actuals to know in general, like overall in the budget, how much do, did it come in and what does that factor into vacancy FTEs? So staff is compiling that information. Okay. We hope to have that to you by wrap up. Okay. And from what the police, um, from what Chief said, I would like this to, either it's going to be an average of like five years for overtime or it's going to be some known factor or it just seems arbitrary the hundred thousand um and then to keep it at half half of that fte vacancy when he just mentioned that we already have half is that correct well i don't know if he's going to be deployed or not I mean, it's okay. likely he's going to be but i can't i don't know for sure Anyways, yeah the, the the half FTE is just based on the statistical turnover of employees for a 20 person department? 25. 25 person department? You know, it's not based on any specific information. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, there's retirements, there's just other staff turnovers. Because I just like to put that on my list, which is a vacancy factor. Um, so if we, for instance, say the actual was 50,000, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a number. If we said, well, next year we'd like that vacancy factor. You know, seventy thousand to save in staff. You're not eliminating any positions, but you're giving the flexibility of the manager to not fill whatever she feels feels through the year that could get us to that number. It's just an easier way. It's not laying off anyone. It's not picking a position. It's literally leaving it up to the administration to do what's best for the village as a whole when we get vacancies. But it is a cost saving. So you're so you're, you're saying like apply a, across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, fifty thousand dollars in vacancies, and leave it up to Rebecca and Mark to figure out where that falls. Correct for this year until we get a staff organizational study. So, so it would be organizationally wide. But say our actuals for this year and last year came in at fifty thousand. That's how much we saved in the salary line. We would have the opportunity to say, well, we'd like to see it at seventy this year and to fill the gap. And that just means you have to hold over some vacancies a little longer. So. But again, I wouldn't, we don't have an organizational study. Kind of like a hiring free. Yes, it's flexible. Yeah, mm -hmm. well it's that's exactly where my mind goes, is that right. the indication is that you're, you're not approving the expeditious replacement of staff that have been authorized by positions. You're asking us to delay that for budgetary purposes. Correct, that's that's the yeah. option. That's what I thought I heard. Mm -hmm. so is there add, another space that we do that? The, can you add? I can do whatever you want. I don't recommend any of that, but that's okay. We know. They don't. <laughs> that's just fine. Can you just put it on the list? One thing um, that I'm a little concerned. I mean, if you say, "Oh, we're going to up it," or you say, "We are going to send you to this conference next year," you, you're building into the base. If you do that all throughout your budget, you're going to have to start at a lower number the year before. I mean, yes. you only get savings one year, then you're back at it another. So it's such a structure, you build yourself a structural But we have a structural deficit, so we're supplementing our debt with our general reserves that runs out in 2024. And so every year, it's, I've always said, it's easier to be making small incremental changes to your base um, than wham, 2024 comes and we need to make a huge cut. I don't, I don't think anybody around the table wants to lay off existing staff. And so this is an alternative to doing that. Um, you know, Milwaukee does furloughs, or you know, we haven't had to have to do this at all. But this is options that are I mean, available. I think it's a lever, as, as Trustee Warren said. We only have so many levers to pull, right. and I think it's a I think it's a lever. Managing vacancies to reduce the budget is um, easier than laying somebody off. You know. Yeah, I'm not. That's, so I just, I mean, I think, we should, I think we should throw it on, on the list. Right. I just, I had a question about officer equipment slash repair. That's 20,000 new this year. With, um, yeah, the, the main, the main, well, Mark moved a couple of items there, but the main was the tasers. Um, our tasers are due for replacement. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, that wasn't qualified for capital improvement or capital project, correct? Because the individual cost is less than a thousand per day. Okay. And so we yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just looking because I know I have a detailed list of those items that would show in the margins of this. Um, it's it's tasers, ballistic vests, yeah. um, oh, weapons. I see. I see. Um, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. They moved. Yeah. They moved it. So where was it before? Department programs and supplies. Oh, okay. So we just made a separate line for it. Okay. Why did put it in there? How um. 
is electric going down by um, by thirteen? Yeah. Well, this year there was a lot of off at night finally. Yeah. Well, yeah. Perfecting the construction zone, right? Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. Yeah, I mean that's part of it. And it, there's um, the other issue that was going on was that the large room in the back was also the heating and air conditioning was connected to the finished portion of the building, um, but now that has been detached. Oh, okay. And so we're not heating and cooling that large area the same as the rest of the building. No. We just have basically large uh, gas. I've got a garage heater in that large area now, so that's going to significantly help us moving forward. The chief is also going to do an energy audit. Under yeah, I'm working with Merritt Construction, who's the one, or Merritt um, Heating and Air that did the um, HVAC, and they'll try to give us a energy saving study okay. that, that they um, should be able to compile for us based on the efficiencies of the units, the change in how things are being heated and cooled. So hopefully we'll have some type of thunder for you. And the roof was replaced, correct? That was correct. Was there insulation that, put in yes, there? Yes, yes. That will help? Yes, that will. I have two more questions. Just for Duncan Services, I know we're going to go to parking utility, but this is where it shows up as this huge increase that's confusing everybody, in, at least in the public. Um, and this is a change because we used to have the two the $2 service fee for overnight parking. We didn't charge in 2027. I mean, 2017, and it still showed up as an expense in the parking utility. That's um, correct. And then this, and then when we decided to charge, then it showed up, remained in the parking utility. So for some reason, it's it's an expense. It doesn't have it's an expense that's not covered, but it's showing up now in general budget. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we we'll, think we'll I just want you to get that on. Yes. Yes. We'll okay. Talk about that. In parking. Okay. And then my last question was um, for the. At least uh, firing range. Thank you, um, Trustee McKay, for bringing that up in email. I, if we are, Chief, can you just give us? You know, we may be losing the fire range. What is your thoughts about where you're going to? shoot? Yes, um, I checked with Brown Deer, and they'll charge us five hundred dollars a year. Oh, that's it. Um, to use it. Okay. Um, the only, just understand that when we do use it, we'll have to, we have to get there and back where we're, some of the stuff we could do on duty that we may have to shift some of that cost. So if I say $500, it's $500 to use that. But I just want to be the, there may be some other labor costs involved. Like but, I mean, not, not, not great, but I do want to point that out, that there are some costs there, um, but they're more than willing to let us use it. Um, and they have um, 500 bucks. So. And that's substantially less than it would take to maintain our Facility. Well, it, if you remember, we did put some um, money into the range in 2015, I believe. We changed the backstop. Um, so it, it, it's, it's in good condition right now. So any maintenance is minimal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, to build a range today is very expensive because of all the new regulations. But that has, since it's been built for a long time, um, it's good to go. So, um, I, I, well, unless you renovate the building, then it's got to all be brought up to current code. If you renovate the X, oh. X amount of the, of the building, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't know that for sure, though. Mm -hmm. um, though I would say that, I mean, if, 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 if mm -hmm. what you guys do, um, it'd be nice to keep it, but obviously it's not you know detrimental if we don't have it. But it'd be nice to have. What other agencies is there to use it? What's that? What other agencies desire to use it? I doubt it. It's kind of a small, um, yeah. <laughs> in comparison to brown deer, it's how, nice, big, but it's just small. how big is brown deer in comparison to the one that we have? Um, I think they have probably six lanes. We would say we have two lanes. When I say lanes, we say if you're shooting side by side, you don't want to shoot more than two people side by side. And our range is probably, I think, about 20 yards, and theirs is about maybe 25, 30. So lengthwise, it's not bigger. And then in fall, we go to um, Germantown, is um, nice enough to allow us to use their outdoor range. So we shoot out there, we qualify with our long rifles and handguns as well, but um, so that we go out there to do the, the longer distance. 
And we, they don't charge us anything for that. So. And well, we could give them some targets. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. You're running full food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the brand deer one is 500 a year for the whole agency or per officer? Uh, for the entire agency. Now, I will tell you that um, the current chief, Mike Cass, I spoke with him, emailed him. They used to, the, the, when, when Brown Deer, I was actually in Brown Deer when we did this, but a lot of agencies were looking for somewhere to shoot. They did a memorandum of understanding of the original agencies, and there was a fee per use, but since then, the um, Brown Deer has just charged a flat fee of $500. So, now, so it, I just want to put that out there, so at some point, it, it the new village manager of Brown Deer comes along and says, hey, we should be charging $1,000. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be surprised that that mm -hmm. price is not in it's, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And supplies for that fall under your supply line? Yeah, we have to bring our own stuff, yeah, for okay. sure. All right, do we have any other questions for the police department? All right, well, again, we're looking forward to the part Oh, one more. Sorry, cultural diversity training? Yes. I had that wrong. I had said that I had thought we had a twenty thousand dollar budget line item for How much? not for this year, um, and I had that wrong. Obviously, it was only a yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I think that was total training. Maybe I don't. I. Yeah, that wasn't even total. I think we were no. I'll take twenty thousand. Right. No. I so, but a thousand is pretty low. And I I yep. know that that's something that the we're going to be coordinating. Yep. So our speakers are actually doing it for free. Uh, it's a former judge in Milwaukee County and a uh, deputy chief from Waukesha uh, is actually coming December 22nd and don't quote me on the it's 30th or something. But we'll be doing it in-house, so the only cost to us will be the overtime for the officers to attend the training. Um, we obviously work three shifts, so the late shifters have to come in and to do that, so it's mandatory for all 25 of them to go to that. Mm. So we kind of got off, um, you know, good cost for that. I mean, usually to bring a trainer, it's about one to, you know, 15 to 3,000. Mm. But it'll just cost us for the overtime, so that's a pretty good, pretty good bargain. Okay, and then last question is the cameras. When we adopted, those are the body cameras or the car yep. cameras? Yep. Is it so is it staying the same? Do we just pay the same price every year after year? Yeah, if you remember, we entered yeah. into a five-year agreement with Axon, and that is the yearly cost, in addition to the yearly cost of the fleet cameras combined. I think one is 12.